The Suburban is once again not running. This time, however, it's just a starter, which makes this the fourth starter the Suburban has eaten. And we're gonna solve this problem once and for all. With this guy, the Powermaster XS Torque Starter. This starter puts out 200 foot-pounds of torque and can crank an engine with up to 18 to one compression ratio and should just bolt right in place of the stock one. Previously, when we installed the starter, and by we, I mean Brian, we would simply take off the old one and air gun back on the new one. But this time, we're gonna to do it right. We'll be using proper torque specs and the shims that this starter came with to install it correctly. Make sure that the clearance between the starter's teeth and our flex plate teeth is correct and this should be the last starter we lose to the Suburban. So let's get it installed. All right first things first. Gonna jack this up. So we're just jacking this up and we're gonna take the wheel off to get better angles for the camera. You do not have to do this if you're changing your starter. <laughs> okay, sure. And we're gonna disconnect whichever one of these terminals is loose. Positive terminal. Set that right there. So now the starter is held on by these two bolts here, so we're gonna remove both of those. For us, it's a 9 16 Oh, and it's real tight. I'm gonna try and not drop this on the camera, but no promises. And our new starter came with new bolts as well, so we could probably just throw these out or throw them in a bin of spare parts. Oh, we should have disconnected all the wires first. This just fell out of the starter, so it's some sort of metal rod. I'm sure it's not supposed to be there. And we also have metal clip that has been mangled and the tips of all of these teeth are mangled. We'll give you a close up once we get it out of the car. What is that, like an eight mil? Hey, it's an eight. Oh. Okay, that should be everything and the starter will just come right out. <laughs> legit in my eye. Uh, so this is our old starter we just pulled out. And if you watched us pull it out, you saw we lost this little metal rod and a little other piece of looked like bent wire was stuck in there. But if you take a look at this gear here, when it gets a signal from the ignition switch will come out and engage the flywheel. But as you can see, Ours is a little uh, floppy. It's not supposed to do that. As well as the edges of all these teeth have been super worn down and stripped out. As on our new starter, they've all got sharp edges here. And as you can see, I can't pull it out, can't move it back and forth freely, unlike this one. So now we're gonna get this one installed and check our clearances and hopefully everything lines up. But if not, we'll go through the procedure on how to make sure everything's in the right clearance. First thing we wanna do, because the starter is grounded by the housing of the starter. So this metal piece is flat on this part and that's how it's grounded. There's no ground wire. So we wanna clean that up the best we can. We've got a little bit of brake cleaner. So you look at all that gunk coming off, that's gonna inhibit the ground and potentially damage your starter over time, which is probably why part of the reason we've gone through so many. And just for good measure, we're gonna scuff it up with a little bit of a steel wool, get any uh, other particulate and stuff that would inhibit grounding scrubbed off best we can. All right, and that looks way better than before. And that goes in like so. And as you notice, I'm only putting in the two bolts that were in the stock locations. This is a starter that works for a lot of vehicles, so they add the third bolt hole and it's kind of a universal thing. All right, so we're just gonna torque these to 32 foot pounds, which is our manufacturer specification. And we're gonna go alternating bolts little by little until you hear the click. There we go. 
So I don't think you'll be able to see this on camera, but the gear that engages the flywheel on the starter is supposed to be a 16th of an inch away from the flex plate. So it has room to move towards the flex plate and engage. I can see right now, just by looking at it, already touching the flex plate which means we need to shim this starter out a little bit to get it to that proper tolerance. To shim this out, we have to remove these two Torx, their T25 Torx bits, and we should be able to remove the mounting block. And this kit came with a 16th of an inch shim, so we're gonna give that a shot and see if that gets us into the proper clearances. One thing that's important to note, these marks are lined up with these holes. So we know that when we put this back on, that's the way we want it. So now we have our block and ring removed. So that's the included shim, and that's gonna go right there. Block is going back on. Hey, you remember how I had those marks? <laughs> well, it wasn't like that, so. And I'm gonna go with rubber mallet back on. And that is seated fully. Install your ring. Now on our final installation of this, Powermaster recommends to use blue Loctite on these two ring bolts. But since we aren't sure if the clearances are gonna be correct, uh, we don't wanna Loctite them yet. All right? You're gonna grab your inch pounds torque wrench and we're gonna set this to 50 inch pounds and torque those bolts. And we're doing the same thing on the starter, just tightening these little by little until we finally hear that, that click. There's one, there's two. Let's go see if she fits. So we have one 16th of an inch spacer here and we tried it, we tested it on the engine. It wasn't quite shimmed far enough out. So we've got some 16 inch aluminum and a couple of hole saws and we're going to try and punch one more out and hopefully that'll get us at the right clearances. And if you look at this, there's a bunch of burrs on that. So I'm gonna hit that with the file real fast and clean it up. And that's good enough for government work. So we're gonna go give it a try. So the first measurement we took, we used three feeler gauges to add up to about a 16th of an inch. And we wanna measure the distance between the starter gear and our flex blade. And to do that, with it installed and torqued down, you should be able to just barely slide those in between the teeth and the flex blade. To get to that proper tolerance, we used three shims. We used two sixteenths of an inch and a 32nd of an inch spacer between the starter and our bracket. The next thing we have to measure is the gap between the flex plate teeth and the center of each of these gears. And to do that, we took a piece of welding wire. This is 35 thousandths and our, our gap needs to be between 20 thousandths and 35 thousandths. So this welding wire is a perfect gauge, but a paper clip is about 30 thousandths and you could probably bend that up and get it in there. To measure this gap with the starter engaged, you can do that simply by attaching 12 volts or your ignition wire to this ignition switch without connecting the positive. Then when you turn the key, it will engage the gear into this flex plate. With that engaged, you shouldn't be able to stick the paper clip in between the tooth and the gear. So that's really close. So we knew our tolerances were okay there. The last thing we have to do before final installation is remove these two T25 Torx bolts and apply blue thread locker. And we're gonna finish this off by tightening these to 50 inch pounds. And she's ready to go. Then we just need to install our two wires 
First, we're gonna attach our ignition wire to this smaller post. And we're gonna use our eight millimeter socket and tighten that up. You don't wanna over tighten these bolts uh, because there's a chance that they strip out and then they just spin there and you can't get your bolts undone. Oh, yeah. And now we're going to attach our positive battery and our, our big nut. Perfect. Those are both tight. These two bolts were torqued down and make sure your steel lines aren't touching the power cable and you should be good to go. And put back on your positive terminal. And now let's make sure it starts. So it starts. If this starter lasts, that'll be great. If it doesn't, we'll put a link in the description to the next video on it. Uh, if you like this video, like the video. If you want to subscribe for more, subscribe for more. And we'll catch you on the next one.